Newcastle having a, a really positive and promising year, personally. There we go. So, what so in, intent for me now? We've got to Newcastle, haven't we? So we've both kind of yeah. talked quite a lot about Newcastle, uh, the Newcastle Thunder already. We're both very impressed with their recruitment. Um, Every time I look back at their squad, I find another player I'm, I'm quite excited to watch. So they've got a uh, solid squad as well, haven't they? A good, good numbers yeah. in the squad, not relying on outside help. I mean, they've got twenty what twenty eight players in there, and they all look like they could easily start. And and don't forget, they've got their academy that they're bringing forward. And I think they announced a debut yesterday for yet another of their youngest ever players. Yeah, and they do have a good link-up um, from that side of things. You know, like, kind of in a way like Coventry have, they get in they get in contact with the university game a little bit or the student game and, and pick up young people into their side. And they're not afraid to throw them in either, are they? No. So wherever you, we've, we've, we've both got them finishing first, have we, then? Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the fact they've strengthened on the field in terms of of that, and the fact they've also strengthened off the field in terms of their coaching setup, I think it's hard to look past them. They're actually three to one um, second favourites with the with with Betfred. Uh, North Wales are at thirty three to one. I should have been mentioning these odds as we go along. London Scholars join them at thirty three to one as well. So these are outsiders, North North Wales. Um, you mentioned Ben Stead, which I thought is is an interesting one because he was great last year for for you guys. Stephen Wilde is out of retirement yet again. Um, and they've got a, f- a few familiar names from that side, from that squad. And plus their coach, um, uh, Anthony Murray, is is back properly now this year. He's had the pre-season and stuff, whereas last year he kind of came in along, along the way as, as the season was about to go. So I... I don't know with North Wales. I, I like what I do like what uh, Mark was saying about North Wales. I sort of think they're going to have a few surprises, but be kind of inconsistent. When you talk about teams that are a little bit soft at the end of games, North Wales seem like that to me a little bit as well. I think yeah, like, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. Knock teams off that they haven't taken over the last couple of years. I've got them finishing ninth. I've also got them finishing ninth. I think. I think that, again, it's another one. It's not so much ill discipline. It's more just their complete completion and their execution that sort of lets them down. And I think some of that squad is sort of coming towards probably the end of of their useful life. I think a, a few of them that will need to be moved on probably now next year. I wonder sort of how much there is a kind of trying to keep a group together and possibly fighting it a bit too much. And I think they've, you know, they also had success with um, the whatever it was called Cup a few years ago. What was it called? Uh, I Pro. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Cup League One Cup. I don't know. Anyway, that. So, we've do been... you ever try drinking that stuff? <sighs> I'm not really uh, was... an isotonic sports drink man. No. <laughs> You're not. Yeah, you, know, you don't feel when when the the sweat of competition hits you or whatever it is John Barnes used to say <laughs> in that advert. Um, it was horrible. Let's move on to the favourites then. In, in the bookies' eyes, two to one favourites for Betfred to finish top of the pile is Oldham, and you've picked them now to to jump into that yeah. race. We talked a lot about them at the top, so I've got them finishing third. I agree with you. They've got a very strong squad. They've got good strike out wide with Jones Bishop and Hawke. And it's, it's coaching as well. I think Scott Scott Naylor is probably one of the better coaches in terms of partly experience, partly settle and, and just general motivation. Motivation and execute and just his execution. I think he's very he's very ruthless as a coach and I think that, that really serves them well. And they've picked up blokes who've been around at a higher level who might have something to prove and I think that'll work well for them. I've got them finishing in, in third in the table. What about yourself? I've gone second. Second, okay. Um, we won't talk too much about West Wales. No offence to West Wales. They've got a, a massive squad like last year and it's probably going to extend to about 50 people by the end of the year because it, it seems to go that way. It's very hard uh, going down there. All I can say is I wish them the absolute best and I really hope they can get a win this year. But I've got them finishing 12th. I've got them finishing 11th because there's only 11 teams oh, sorry, in the 11th. Yeah, that's what I meant to say last anyway um they still however to give them their credit to west wales they still have the best names in the league they've still kept archie snook and dalton desmond walker so they've still got des walker and they've also got harry boots what about the player so, who's number 29 on their uh, squad list 
Yes, they also have number 29 on the squad list. <laughs> I'm going to have to practice that one Demis ahead of Sunday. Demis Kartsanakis. I'd go with there. Let's let's hope he, he picks up a toe injury so he isn't selected for Sunday. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you might hear a sudden PA system failure at that point. 11 for both of them then. Let's move up to Cumbria then. Uh, Whitehaven, we start with, first of all, in in Cumbria. For me, with Whitehaven, they've done a lot of bringing people in from the amateur game. Um, Either bringing people back in who've been semi-pro before or bringing people in as new. Um, And and I just think that's that's a bit difficult. for them to get any consistency out of. I think it's a great move that they've been able to bring Brett Phillips back in. I think he was a quality second rower at this level. But I just I just wonder if this team, if it's a year too early for this team with some of these guys. And I also wonder whether playing rugby league is the priority for a lot of this team. And that that concerns me when you know when injuries come along when the when the when the tough gets going um i've got them just missing out unfortunately on the on the playoffs um i've got them sixth i've gone for them in fifth i'm sort of agreeing with you on a lot of that i think the coach i think personally made they made a mistake by getting rid of carl forster i think he's um quality coach and he gave them so much as a player as, as if nothing else but I think it may That's well true. it and may he took well have some been... of their other good players with them, didn't they? But Gary Charles is take... an experienced man around around League One, isn't he? He is, but but obviously you've you've taken away from the playing squads in in so doing. I understand it may well have been money related if you if which is another question mark over Whitehaven, I suppose, Manager. isn't it? The, the, the plus on. points for him is that they have retained Jesse Joe Parker and Dion A. Yeah, who are real electric players and. and Jesse J. Parker, but just very solid. So they, they, you know, they can build round players like that. And they've got players like Chris Taylor and Dave Thompson, who, if they sorted themselves out, could have been able to play at a higher level. They've got that young Andrew Bullman, who um, is a, is a youngster who scored tries in in both codes uh, as a youngster. So he, he's got a, an opportunity as well to show what he can do. So, yeah. Yeah. So I had them in fifth. I think them and Hunslet are sort of interchangeable. Yeah, I do think that that those two will have a close race for that last playoff place. OK, let's move on to Workington Town then. One, another team with a fairly small squad, but I think they've got quality in the squad. They've got to be the oldest on average age squad. Quite probably. Ollie Wilkes and Sean Penkovich are, are ancient, aren't they? Um, Carl Forber's not going to be young. Um, Carl Olstrom's going to be relative, he's relatively experienced. There's, there's quite a few I in agree, there. I think. but I think there's... Oh, Dan, Danny, Danny Tickle, don't forget as well. Danny Tickle. Ryan Fieldhouse, it feels like, has been around forever as well. But I think in the outside backs, they've got some youth and some strike and, and some excitement. I mean, that Elliot Miller played well in the back end of the season as, as they ramped up into the playoffs last year, I thought, along with Tyler Meller. So, yeah, I, I've got them finishing second. I think that... This is a team that probably has the capability of bringing more on board as well. Leon Price's name and cachet helps with that too. Um, you know, whilst there's other coaches who've been around the league one scene more, so people at that level might know what they can do for their careers. He's a name that people will be willing to go and associate themselves with in, yeah. the, in the short to medium term as well, I think. So I think that's a... a I think he's definitely one who's got potential to take a bigger job in the future as well. Yeah. So it may be a player thinks it's worth getting in with him now. It is a long-term prospect. Just like what a couple of lads did at Whitehaven with Forster. So, yeah. yeah. But where, where have you got them finishing then? I've gone for Workington in third, actually. Excellent. So that, that rounds off the uh, the League One preview. Then let's do a, a quick recap of our own league tables then. So I, I'll start whilst you pick up your yep. notes. I've got Newcastle finishing in, in first. They were second favourites with the Bookies. Third favourites with the... Four favourites with the Bookies, sorry, Workington, I've got finishing second. And then Oldham, who are favourites with the Bookies, I've got in third. Um, Doncaster, who are one of the other ones up there with the with the Bookies, I've got in fourth place. Um, and then I go Hunslet fifth, Whitehaven sixth, London Scholars in seventh, Coventry Bears in eighth, North Wales in ninth, Keithley in tenth, and West Wales in eleventh. So I've got Newcastle to win and uh, get promoted Oldham to come second and get promoted 
Workington, Doncaster, Whitehaven, Hunslet, Keepley in seventh, which could be a bit of a say what, but I, I think they're going to come good towards the back end, is my prediction. They, they're going to have a, a dodgy start, but they'll they'll pull it together from the residual quality they've got in that squad. Um, Coventry in eighth, North Wales ninth, Scholars tenth, and West Wales in eleventh. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Tim, for going through those and showing your insight as well from what you've seen last year as well as what you, you've seen in the pre-season. That's really cool. Thanks for everyone. Yeah, I'm looking forward to looking forward to getting into it and getting back into it on Sunday. Yeah, that... and I will have a column in the Bears program this year, will so you? you'll be able to read what I'm thinking about League One as it goes on at the program. Very exciting. Will there be plugs for Super League Pod along the way, or have you been told you're not allowed to do that? <laughs> I've not been told I can't yet, so uh, expect a few, yeah. <laughs> OK, well, thanks to everyone for listening. Do, um, you know, if you're down at Coventry, say hello to Tim. Uh, you know, make a song request. He can reject it politely and then <laughs> and then play his own choices. Um, you can find us at Super League Pod on Twitter and Instagram if you're not already following us on the social scene. Facebook.com forward slash Super League Pod as well. Super League pod at gmail.com if you want to email us about what we're doing um you can get more slp content on our blog which you can find at superleaguepod.com you can find our shows subscribe through spreaker itunes youtube and on the podcast addict app you can also find us on the leaguecast android app along with other rugby league listens and go to rugbyleaguemedia.com where you'll find us amongst a range of alternative rugby league media outlets for your eyes as well as your ears to enjoy we're just the ears other people are the eyes um Please do like and share and retweet our posts and, and that sort of stuff. Share on Facebook, retweet on, on Twitter, um, because uh, that, that really helps. Also, if you could take the time to give us a rating or review on iTunes, it all helps to boost the, the, the awareness of our podcast and spread the SLP family wider. Um, and finally... And, and if you are at a League One game, then do uh, do tell us and uh, get in touch on the Google form. Send us a match review. We'll always read them out. Yeah, we'll have a get League One game of the week every week. That'll be on the form already. And if you want to add on any other game, you just click over, put in the names of the teams and give us your review. Thanks for, that, for reminding people of that, Tim. And we want to thank you all for listening until you hear from us again, which probably will be very soon because we're doing two shows in one night. Then keep enjoying and supporting the greatest game of all, Rugby League.